Good morning, friends. My name is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cooks United Methodist Church. And um, welcome, welcome, welcome. We spend a few minutes together uh, here. Live stream at 830, uh, Monday through Thursday. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and we, <clears throat> every week, and we uh, hope that you uh, can join us uh, more often. Uh, good morning to all of those uh, who are popping up on the screen. Uh, we're thinking of you and praying for you. Uh, and those of you who will find us later, you are in our thoughts and prayers as well. And those of you who don't find us until way after this moment is done. <clears throat> we love and hold you in our prayers uh, too. And uh, our purpose for doing this is um, very simple. We want to be close to the one who is the source of um, all good things uh, for us and we want you to know that you are loved that God is for you uh, and that life is meant to have uh, an abundance uh, in it for you so that's why we're doing this we uh, began a week ago yesterday the Lenten season um, for 2021 the Lenten season or Lent uh, is 40 days leading up uh, to Easter. We don't count Sundays. And um, we've decided this year that we're going to use ordinary objects um, and, and gain some um, pretty foundational spiritual truth and encouragement from that. And this week we've been talking about bread. Well, we started on Sunday thinking about that line in the prayer that Jesus taught his followers to pray. Uh, and that line is, give us this day our daily bread. Well, we're going to think about uh, what the daily part of that means. We kind of have that in the back of our mind when we ask God for what we need, what would sustain us. But we often so confuse what we need and what we want that our focus is drawn away from what is required for me this day physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, that I might thrive. Um, and so that's the verse that we're going to use today. It's one of the I am statements that Jesus makes. They're recorded only in the Gospel of John. Um, <clears throat> and there are, uh, well, there are seven that are obvious. There are a couple of other uh, statements that we could use as well. Another way to look at this is um, to think about the names of Jesus. Um, uh, for instance, uh, I have, uh, well, basically four names. I have my first name, a middle name, my maiden name, my married name. <clears throat> but then there are all other kind of nicknames and roles um, that I play. And those are names too. And so bread of life is another name for Jesus. That's what I mean. Uh, and so would you hear uh, this I am statement um, from the sixth chapter of John, verse 35. I am the bread of life, Jesus said. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Mm. Uh, I just want to say right off the bat, uh, I don't think many of us, uh, us, those who are gathered here, I don't think there's many of us who really know hunger on a regular basis. We watch the clock more than we listen to our bodies to know if it's time for us to eat. If, if, if the clock says so, or if the television says so, then it's time to eat, uh, not our bodies. And so we already begin to struggle with this. But when I think about I, let me just ask this question. Uh, when you have been hungry before, what satisfies your hunger? Because of our reality, because of the abundance around us, I think most of us would answer that question, well, it depends on what I'm hungry for. What it feels, what it's like to feel satisfaction, however, is that this desire or a hunger in us, whether it's for food or something else, feels um, requited. 
it's satisfied. It's been taken care of. And so my uh, hunger for um, something salty or crunchy, yeah, that chip is going to take care of it. Uh, if I am hungry for a moment of peace, um, then it's going to require shutting the door or turning off the lights or unplugging whatever, you know, is also creating extra noise. What, what, think about satisfaction. What does it feel like for your thirst, your hunger to be satisfied? I think what we're dealing here with, and Jill Duffield in her book, uh, Lent in Plain Sight, uh, used a word that really caught my attention when I was reading this the very first time, first time, and that is the word staple. Now, not staple like you use to hold paper together, but staple like a regular, dependable, necessary part of your diet or your everyday routine or it's a st things there are things that are staples for your work in the classroom or in the office uh, and we don't think about um, we don't think about the spiritual staples needed to live a healthy life very often first of all let me say that the bread of life um, sounds poetic but not nearly as poetic as the other I am statements like um, I am the gate uh, I am the way I am the life I am truth the, those are all much more poetic and it sends our mind in, in one particular direction but to hear Jesus say I am the bread of life that's a very ordinary not necessarily mundane as in boring, but it's a very basic and ordinary claim. Uh, and then I, when I read that word staple and I think about the sacramental language that that also brings up for, her, for us, we have, to, we, we have to remember too that and by sacrament, uh, sacrament is based on the word, um, it means sacred, and so sacramental language or a sacramental act are those basic things that take us to a higher experience. And so the, the sacramental language, bread of life, means that our minds and our hearts have already gone to uh, an experience of. It sounds like, it reminds me of Holy Communion. Um, bread, <clears throat> excuse me, bread, Jesus as the bread of life came way before all the constructs that we place around Holy Communion. And so the bread came first, if that makes sense. Um, and so then here's the next crazy step in my train of thought. <clears throat> So when you and I heard a couple of weeks ago that snow and ice might be coming, uh, what's the first thing that you did? I know the first thing a lot of people did is because they bought every loaf of bread there was in the grocery store. They got all the milk. We're so afraid of being snowed in for two or three days and we might be without the basics that all the bread's gone, <laughs> all the milk was gone. In the pandemic, when the pandemic started about a year ago for us, people were afraid those very basic things are going to be um, in short supply. And so we panic and we, we don't want to miss out on those sta those staples in our life. And so it wasn't just the bread, it was the toilet paper, the paper towels, the cleaning supplies, all of the things we knew that would get us through. And isn't it funny how as long as you got bread and milk or bread and water, uh, I, I sure do miss guacamole, but I, I'll, I bet I'll make it. I sure do miss fill in the blank. Well, let me ask you this. So what happens if beyond one morning, but say for every morning for a, a long period of time, you decide ice cream and cake is the best way to get your body up and going. What's gonna happen? 
we become sluggish it doesn't feed us in the right way literally and figuratively and then we begin to struggle you put on extra pounds we uh, anyway f same thing for lunch if all you had was chips and dip if for for dinner if all you had uh, was junk uh, were things that did not fill you well my friends we've got to be willing to make that um, spiritual extrapolation to what happens if the only thing that is feeding our very soul is our pursuit of looking our best outside appearance fashion uh, makeup whatever if that if that really is our uh, one of our our, our greater uh, foci our greater focuses what if our only drive, what we thought would feed us, was climbing the corporate ladder, making sure our report card is perfect? What if somebody else's approval or somebody else's agreement were the staples of our day? Uh, those are empty calories. Just They don't, we're putting in calories to our body when we eat the eat junk but they're not the kind of calories our bodies will um will love to be able to burn they don't lead us to a healthier place i've never thought until duffield uh kind of poked the bear so to speak about spiritual mental emotional empty calories but y'all, when we sit and veg in front of a television, when we could be doing something else, should be doing something else, empty calories. When we uh, fill our minds and practice with our mouths, talking about everybody else except the one who gave us life, could be empty calories. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life, we must ask ourselves the question then, is Jesus a staple in my life do I go to that one thing do I go to this thing that will sustain me uh, in a way that will sustain me I have to make a confession and I, my guess is I'm not the only one who does this but how often do we receive the provision and give no recognition no thought to the provider so when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, that's like living with no real connection to the source of that life. So uh, to go back to the question when I ask you about what satisfies you when you're hungry, well, it depends on the circumstance. I think one of the greatest glories, the greatest gifts is that no matter how I am feeling, no matter what my circumstances may prompt me to think about, wonder about, ask about, try to pursue, no matter those, Jesus satisfies. Jesus always satisfies. It may take a while because sometimes there's work to be done. But Duffield asks this beautiful question in thinking about Jesus as a staple in your life, not that we're using Jesus, but that we depend on him, lean on him, go to him first for sustenance and for nurture. She asks this beautiful question, what's life giving for you? I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, my first thought this morning, what is life giving for me is laughter. Laughter. Uh, there are a lot of other things too, but doesn't that just feel good? It feels like you're taking in and exhaling at the same time. Laughter is, um, uh, I heard somebody say once, it's like carbonated holiness. <laughs> you know, it enlivens us. What is life giving? It's laughter for me. And so how do I experience Jesus 
in that moment. Honestly, sometimes my laughter is not holy. I'm laughing at somebody or I'm laughing at something at the expense of somebody and that's not okay. But many times I laugh because of the pure joy of a moment, of a joke, of a word, of a, something I've witnessed and I am not aware that Jesus is right there, that maybe Jesus is laughing too. And one of my favorite pictures of all times, paintings, drawings, it doesn't matter what form it comes in, is Jesus laughing. Matter of fact, I can see it right here out of the corner of my eye here in my office. How crazy that I receive the provision, but I do not think much of the provider. When Jesus says, I am the bread of life. My friends, today can we let that move from head knowledge to heart knowledge and begin to make this, um, uh, this regular and committed practice of going to Jesus first. Going to Jesus first and not just for what you need, or what you want but going to Jesus first in gratitude that Jesus is already present and that whatever comes up I know Jesus will satisfy hmm. I, I think we need to sit with that question for a while is Jesus a staple in your daily living if not, that may be one reason why you feel dissatisfied in this moment. Let's pray for one another. Lord, I thank you so much for um, what beautiful words uh, spoken by Jesus. We thank you for the beautiful words written by Jill Duffield. I thank you for the beautiful words that are spoken by my friends who gather with me uh, this morning to one another, to me. I thank you for the ways that you are a part of all that satisfies. You are truth. You are our way. You are the gate for us and you are that ordinary and yet glorious daily staple the bread of life teach us lord to come to you first and to not be distracted by the things that promise a sweet taste or a lasting pride <clears throat> Help us to see through the empty promises of satisfaction and to remember who is the source of our life and come to you first, no matter what, for what we want, for what we need, for who we are, for who you are. And help us, Lord, when we experience so much that is life-giving, to receive that provision and give thanks immediately to you, our provider. You are, are our daily bread. And it is not only our joy, we are finding it necessary to ask for you to be present, not because we question your provision, but because we are so quickly distracted. Thank you for being our bread of life, our daily bread, the one who is our sustenance and the one who nurtures us to discover who we can be and what we can do by your power and in your name. It is in your strong name, O oh Jesus, that we pray. My friends, I hope you have a wonderful day, uh, an even better weekend, and uh, we begin looking at a new object uh, starting this Sunday for worship, 9.30 uh, in the morning, 5.30 in the evening here at Cook's. If you don't have a church home or if you don't have a place to gather or you need to do that through a device, we'll be here. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Bye.